Hello, good morning. Welcome to GEM Depression Seminar. I'm Pastor Eunice, and I'd like to start this seminar with a prayer. With a prayer. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we are so grateful for your love and grace that brought us together to listen to Dr. Choi together. Father, please help us to fix our eyes upon you. Many of us are struggling and discouraged, and sometimes we feel there is no way out. Father, please let us be reminded of your son and his mighty work on the cross. Father, please bless this time and anoint her with your spirit and wisdom. So that everyone in this seminar, whether on site or online, experiences your healing and restoration. We bring you all the glory and commit this time to you. In your precious son's name, we pray. Amen. So, it's my great honor to introduce Dr. Eunyoung Choi. She's been teaching at Torch Trinity Graduate University since 2003. And originally, she studied uh, pharmacy in Seoul National University. And then she continued her academic journey in studying psychology and counseling in Seoul National University. And after she obtained PhD, she taught in many different universities, many renowned universities, and she's been with Torch Trinity since 2003. She's also a senior member of the Korean Youth Counseling Institute. And she's married with two children. Let's welcome her with a warm hands. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, beautiful and lovely church, the Global Mission Church. Uh, I'm Eun Young Choi, and it's my great honor and privilege to be here and just talk to you and share my experiences. Um, I was born in Korea, and I never studied abroad. So. The thing is this, my English is not that good enough to give a lecture in English, so please understand my kind of short of English. So if you cannot understand my lecture, then please feel free to let me know that, oh, it's not understandable, so that I may speak to you again. All right. Okay. Uh, the topic today uh, is depression. Uh, how are you these days? Uh, how about your work? How about your family? How about your church? How about the relationship with God these days since the COVID-19 uh, outbreak? Many of us, probably all of us, have been suffered a lot from uh, this uh, difficult time. And uh, I'd like to share some knowledge and basic ideas about depression. Uh, so this is the, the flow that I just prepared for today's seminar. First, I want to share some basic symptoms of depression and also bipolar disorder, which is closely related to the mood disorder. And secondly, uh, I'd like to share some counseling or biological aspects regarding depression. Because you know, when you understand some basic knowledge about depression, and it's uh, very helpful for you guys to be uh, de uh, relieved, relieved from the depression. 
Also, when you guys are uh, going to help the depressive people, then it's also helpful to know some basic knowledge. Thirdly, uh, finally, uh, I want to share very important biblical insight regarding depression. So uh, let me start with my personal story. This is uh, my school own. The next. This is my school picture. Probably some of you graduated from this university. Uh, as I was introduced by the sister Eunice, I have been here uh, since 2003. Uh, two or three years later, I just came to be a the Torchy Trinity professor of Christian counseling. I got a second bottom score from my class evaluation. <laughs> Uh, as you know now, I graduated the Seoul, Univers Seoul National University, and I just continued to my study there. So I never been thought that I can be the bottom professor. But actually, I got the second bottom, not the very bottom, but the second bottom score from my class evaluation. Please guess my feeling at the time. I was so, so depressed. Sometimes I cried when I just went to bed. And sometimes I could not open my eyes and go to the school for my work. How about you? Have you ever depressed in your whole life? And just think about the time that you are so in your dark tunnel now. Uh, so the reason why I want to deliver some basic symptoms about this major depression is has uh, two purposes why I'm doing this. For the people who can be diagnosed as a major depression, please understand that you are just sick. You have no problem. You are not good. That means you are not good. No, this is the reverse. You don't need to think that you are not good. This is the thing that I really I'm afraid of. I'm not used to, to deliver the lectures in English. So uh, please understand. Okay, you you need to be very alert <laughs> when you just uh, uh, listen to me. So. The people who would uh, be diagnosed as a deep major depression, then please don't consider you as bad or as incapable or things like that. Just think that you are the sick. Okay? On the other hand, many people would think this way, oh, I must be depressive. Oh, my mood is not good. So that can be your another kind of rationale, not to do anything. Okay, so after you understand the basic symptoms of depression, then, okay, I'm not that sick. So just, uh, I need to go before God and just listen to God and do the things that I, uh, I'm, I am supposed to do. Okay, so are you ready? Okay. Hey. When you see this paper that I just uh, distributed, then uh, there are nine symptoms of major depression. So uh, when you are diagnosed as major depression, then the doctors consider two basic things. How many symptoms do the people show? Okay, the number of symptoms and the duration of the time that you are suffered from the symptom. So uh, let us uh, give our attention to the symptoms first. First, depressed mood most of the day, nearly every day. Depressed mood, very certain. Secondly, markedly diminished interest or pleasure in activities most of the day near by every day. 
you know, your lack of interest and the kind of a pleasure feelings. Thirdly, changes in appetite that result in weight losses or gains unrelated to your dieting. Which means what? You may gain some weight, but you may also gain, uh, lose, lose your weight too. So, so change of appetite is another sign of depression. Firstly, the changes in sleeping patterns. Some people sleep too much, but you know some people cannot have enough sleep, insomnia. Fifth, loss of energy or increased fatigue. Usually the depressive people are very much exhausted and they feel not good from that. Next, restlessness or irritability, feelings of anxiety. No, this is very typical. When your mood is very down, then you don't know the reason why, but you feel very anxious and irritated. Okay? Next, the feeling of worthlessness, helplessness, or hopelessness, even in a appropriate guilt feeling. This is important. When you are suffering from depression, then worthlessness, Helplessness, hopelessness, and un inappropriate guilt feelings that you may experience. Next, difficulty thinking, concentrating, or making decisions. So it's very important to understand this aspect because when you are working, when you are studying, you know, it's very natural for you guys to what? Uh, experience a lack of uh, concentrating. And you, make, you cannot make a right choice at the spa because what? You have a very indecisive kind of a pattern in your thinking. So, you now think about this test taking situation. You need to take one correct answer out of four out of, out of five, right? Even you cannot concentrate uh, much when you are studying, then you must experience a very hard time on your study or on your work. Lastly, thoughts of death or attempt at suicide. Yeah, it's very, very certain. You know, if you keep blaming yourself, then the final is that, oh, I should kill myself. It's a tragedy. So, among the, out of these nine symptoms, usually the major depression people would show five. Five out of these nine. And the duration is over two weeks. So at least the people should show continuously out of the five symptoms out of nine, at least for two weeks, for two weeks. So you may experience when you are just open to your eyes and your mood is so down. But, you know, after you had a dinner with your friends and your mood is going up, don't worry. You are not depressed. <laughs> okay? Yeah, you are not. But as I told you, when you just see these symptoms and you can just calculate the numbers of the symptoms and, oh, I might be having a, the major depression, then you need to go to the doctor and get some medic medicines from the doctors. Because when you have a cold, what kind of symptoms do you experience? Fever, sore throat, or the achy muscles, things like that. This is, uh, these are the symptoms of cold. It's the same. When you are depressed, you may experience these major symptoms. Then you may just visit doctors and get some appropriate medication. All right. Oh, uh, can would you show the SSRI picture? Next one, please. 
Oh, okay. Okay. The previous one. Previous one, please. Yes, this is it. When you visit the doctor, then the doctor can prescribe antidepressant, right? Antidepressant. And this is the picture how the antidepressant uh, drugs work in your body. Uh, usually, the most popular antidepressant is SSRI, uh, which is what? Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. What does that mean then? You need to give your full attention to the words reuptake inhibitor. Reuptake inhibitor. Uh, when you see the picture here, then the small, the green molecules, particles are the serotonin. And usually, this is a biological explanation. The serotonin is remaining in your blood vessel, and the certain amount of serotonin can guarantee you that you would have a good mood. Understand? Yeah. So what if, when you cannot maintain the certain amount of serotonin in your blood vessel, then your mood would be going down and down. So, the effect of the antidepressant is to maintain a certain amount of serotonin in your blood vessel. In order to do this, how does this SSRI work then? In order to understand this, you need to uh, go to your biology that you learned a long way, long time ago. This is the presynaptic neuron, I'm sorry. This is the presynaptic neuron, and this is a synapse, okay? And uh, the, the blue part there is uh, your blood, blood. So oh, the principle how the, the SSRI is working is based on a lock and key theory. Lock and key theory. What does that mean, lock and key? This one, if you, the shape of the key is just fitted into the opening part, then we can unlock, right? So, when the, the shape of SSR, I'm sorry, the shape of serotonin is just fitted to this synaptic part, then that is just open, and the serotonin is uptaken into the synapse. So as the result, guess what? What happened? The amount of the serotonin in your blood vessel is getting decreased. Got it? Decreased. So how can we prevent this kind of thing then? We just uh, have a SSRI and antidepressant, and the drug is going to block, block this part, the opening part. Okay, so that uh, the serotonin cannot be reuptaken into the synapse. It's so complicated. Understand what I'm saying? Thank you. Oh, you yeah, are very smart. <laughs> so through this, I want to emphasize the people who are depressed and need some kind of a medication do not hesitate to visit doctors. No, the side effect is getting less and less these times. And, you know, you can get a really good effect from uh, this medication. However, you need to wait for three weeks at least to have this effect. This is not a fever drug, you know. It takes how, how many? At least three weeks to get some kind of help from this medicine. So just keep taking the pills until the time that your mood is going up, okay? That's the thing uh, regarding the biology. Uh, can we see more about the, then this bipolar disorder? Bipolar disorder? Yes. Um, 
when I just prepare this uh, sh uh, slot, I just put compensation here. Compensation. It's very, very important concept of understanding the bipolar. Uh, what does the bipolar mean? Two poles. Two poles. So uh, in terms of our mood, there are two poles. One is a depressed state. The other is manic state. Yes. So if you would be depressed for a long, long time, then as a compensation of this depressed mood, what do you need? Yeah, you need to be elevated. You, your mood should be up and up as a compensation. So usually these bipolar people go get a back and forth and back and forth from this pole to the this pole, the depression and many. Got it? So first of all, I think basically the psychological mechanism of bipolar people has the same kind of mechanism with the depressive people, major depression people, compensation. And secondly, uh, can we just uh, read the seven symptoms then? Seven symptoms of the bipolar disorder. Again, the same. You know, you should fit in to the, this kind of a criterion that you can be diagnosed as a bipolar. Then at least three symptoms that you should show. Three symptoms out of seven. Out of seven. First, feeling very happy, elated, or overjoyed. Sometimes you're feeling self-important. Okay. Secondly, taking very quickly without talking, sorry, talking very quickly without pauses. One time, one of my church members just called me at night around 12 o'clock, okay? And he kept talking and talking for more than two hours without any pauses. But at that time, I did not notice that he is, has a bipolar, so I just... Uh, kept listening. And the next week, finally, we had an appointment to meet and have a lunch together. So I was there, and I, wait, I waited him for more than one hour, but he was not appeared. So, yes, in that case, what, what would you do? I called him, but he did not get my phone three or four times. And he was just disappeared, totally. Then I noticed, I realized that he has been suffering a lot from his bipolar thing. So second, talking very quickly without pauses is another symptom. Thirdly, feeling full of great new ideas and having important plans. When he talked to me, he said this, Oh, sister, oh, I am making a film. Okay, I am making a film. And the next plan is to direct a kind of opera like Jesus Christ Superstar. So I just become a, the director of this new event, the opera. So... Oh, something is wrong. At that time, I just felt that something is wrong in him. Just like this, feeling full of great new ideas and important plans. Firstly, being delusional, having hallucinations, and disturbed or illogical thinking. So you may notice that they are in their fantasy world, and their saying is not realistic. Okay, The next one, Uh, not feeling like sleeping. You know, if you would uh, just uh, be their place and uh, think about the situation, okay? I, I have many, many things to do and accomplish. Then you have no time. <laughs> you have no time to do all of this. So usually they do not sleep enough 
and do something very, very eagerly. And doing things then often have a disastrous consequences. It's very risky, such as spending large sums of money on expensive and sometimes unaffordable items. So you cannot understand them, but they just keep gaining some uh, unnecessary stuff, and they just uh, give you the rationale why I get these stuff, items, you know. And lastly, making decisions or saying things that are out of character and that others see as being risky or harmful. Right. So out of these seven, if you would show or some people would show three at least, then you can be diagnosed as a bipolar disorder. Okay. Now, can we move on a counseling story? Yeah, I am a counselor, and we have many different kinds of explanation why the depression just occurred, and how can we intervene this problem. Uh, let us just start with Freud's idea. Freud's idea. When you see this lecture note, I just listed the three important things to know. First, high standard. Second, fail to please parents. Third, self-blaming. Self-blaming. Uh, in, in order to understand these three ideas, then you need to study Freud's basic ideas first. Okay, so just let me explain uh, in detail. According to Freud, our personality can be composed of three different kind of parts. Yeah. One, id. Second, ego. Third, super ego. I think this is a kind of a common sense for now. Yeah, id, ego, and super ego. And guess the role of it. Usually, your it can be run by the principle of instinct. Instinct. Second, your ego part can be run by the principle of reality. Reality. Okay? And third part is run by the principle of morale and ethics. Morale and ethics. Okay, now you are listening to my lecture now, and the, the, the lecture is so boring. Okay, let's just suppose that, that this lecture is boring. Yeah, everyone is just listening to the lecture very carefully now. Thank you. But just uh, imagine that you are listening to one speaker, and the lecture is so boring. So uh, you feel really sleepy. Then what can you do then? Probably some people just fall asleep like this. Okay, from beginning to end. Uh, these people are moved by their eat, eat. Our instinct, okay? I, I want sleep and just fall asleep. And uh, how about the people who have a very strong super ego? the people who are run by the moral and ethical principle. They cannot sleep at all. And uh, with this, uh, be alert, be alert. This is a classroom. You need to give your full attention to the professor. Those people are run by a, this for ego part. And how about the people who are run by ego? Ego. Usually, the, your ego part is resolving the conflict between your id and super ego. Okay, your ego and id and super ego. Then, probably you may go out and just wash your face and come back. Okay? Yeah. Or you can have some candies in order to be a lot, okay? So realistically, the ego can resolve the conflict between these two parts. 
So basically, what the Freudians are trying to do is to strengthen our ego part. Strengthen our ego part. But this is not the things that I want to share now. High standard of depression people can be related to their heart. Too strong super ego. Too strong super ego. So usually, anti-social person cannot be struggling from depression at all. You know, they do not respect the social regulations and rules and morale, so they do not suffer from depression at all. But many Christians are suffering a lot from depression. Why? We can develop our super ego very easily because, you know, on the, on the Bible, oh, you should do this and you should do not do this. There are so many do's and don'ts in Bible. And you are commanded to obey God's will all the time. You, may, you should respect your parents all the time. And you know what? As a human being, it's totally impossible to keep all the laws and the commandment from God as a human being. So it's very, very difficult. But, you know, the many Christians are just forced to do something good, do something well, do something right. So we can develop our super ego very strongly. And secondly, the Freud just listed uh, more than 10 defense mechanisms. Probably some of you may hear some of them, like what? Rationalization, displacement, you know, uh, whatever. But I want to give my full attention to one specific defense mechanism, which is introjection. Introjection. So in order to understand the depressive people, you should understand the word introjection. Then, what does intro mean? Inward, inward. What does ject mean? Should, should. Then, please, guess. What do people just shoot inside? Their parents' value, their parents' desire, their parents' want. So usually those people who are uh, suffered from depression are people who really endlessly try to please their parents. So if you would have depressed, then you should figure out what kind of value and the desire that my parents had. And you need to think this way. Then, do I really want to accomplish the parents' value and their desires in my life or not? You, need, you should think this way in order to escape from depression. Uh, one day, uh, we had uh, a kind of uh, social conversation with my church members, probably 10 members gathered at that time. And we started to uh, share our early life experiences with the parents. And abruptly, one lady told the, the others, oh, now I realized that I am not a failure because my father just, uh, tr uh, just wanted me to go into a really good school, like Seoul National or Yonsei, whatever. And specifically, the lady talked about Korea University. Okay? Yeah. My father really wanted me to enter Korea University, but I failed. And I just uh, entered another, the... The, the, the bottom level of school, you know, in Korea. So I have been thought that, oh, I am failure. But this is important. But now I understand. I figured out that I've never thought of 
getting into that Korea university in my life. <laughs> that is my father's want. I've never wanted to go there. So at that time, she can be freed enough from the shackles that is just bounding her as a failure. Okay? So please think about your parents. What kind of value, what kind of desire, what kind of wants that your parents just are uh, forced to, to accomplish through your life? Please be free. Please be independent from your parents. And stick to the God's law, stick to the God's love, and stick to God's will. Okay? Probably that could be my conclusion about the depression lecture. And thirdly, the Freud talked about a, this uh, obsessive, obsessive uh, self-blaming, obsessive self-blaming towards oneself. Uh, they never stop to blame themselves with some kind of trial or failure and uh, the things that they are not satisfied. So these three things can make a depression symptoms. High standard, fail to please parents, and self-blaming. Uh, next slide is about cognitive approach to depression. When you see the slide here, then you can see the red part. What does that say? No hope. No hope. So uh, usually the cognitive counselors can just attack their irrational thinking. And in the midst of the core beliefs, usually depression people may have that kind of thinking pattern. I have no hope at all. No hope on myself, no hope on other people, no hope on the world. So when they see themselves, oh, you are not good enough. Oh, you are incapable. Oh, you are failure. So the, the, the final conclusion about themselves is you have no hope. I cannot find any hope on you. How about the people around them? When I see my spouse, when I see my children, when I see the, uh, the, the pastors, I cannot put any hope on them. Next, when they see the world, the society, and the schools, and working places, oh, I cannot find out any hope from, my, from this world. Then, when you combine these kind of ideas together, then you may have a depressive symptoms, depression. So uh, what can we learn from this cognitive approach? Finding out a small hope is very necessary. Finding out a small hope, like what? You need to think it very concretely and specifically. Your hope can be touchable. Your hope can be what? Approachable. Your hope can be really specific and small enough to gain. So what kind of hope that you can just put on again? This is a kind of idea that we can learn from cognitive therapist. The next slide is about act, not act from the New Testament. This is act, A-C-T. So act represent, yeah, this is written in your paper, act. A means acceptance. C represent commitment. And T means therapy. So acceptance, commitment, therapy, we call this act. In Korean, 수용, 잔념, 치료. This is very popular and probably the most uh, useful counseling theory that I guess. And the reason I am introducing this act today to you is not because that this 
theory is popular, but we can apply our biblical and spiritual principle on this theory too. So uh, let us start with the basic formula of this uh, theory. Can you? Can would you? Okay, thank you. This is the formula. Suffering is a combination of pain and controlling effect. Effort. Sorry. Suffering is composed of what and what? Pain and controlling effort. What does this theory assume? Pain itself does not produce any kind of suffering. Okay? Pain does not produce any kind of symptoms psychologically. Then what would produce the symptoms then? When only your pain is combined by or with your controlling effort, the suffering just started. So let us apply this principle into depression. The last one here. Uh, depression is a combination of a feeling of a failure. This is the pain, okay? This is the pain that usually depressive people are suffering. Feeling of a failure and endless trial to success. Endless trial to success, which is controlling effort. Then, would you please think about the, the Bible stuff? When is the time that the people are suffering from the pain? Since Adam and Hawa just took the, the fruit of good and evil tree, then all pain just started. Why then? They really want to be like God. Okay, they just assumed, okay, the snail just told me that if I just would have that fruit, the tree of good and evil, then I just become God. That's what the how I Eve heard from the snare. But what happened actually? How and the Adam can could not be like God, and they started seeing themselves, their naked body, their naked body. What if you would see yourself and you are naked? You would feel really shame. You would feel really anxious. So, what did the first humans try to do? Adam and Eve. They covered up their naked body with the fig tree leaves. Fig tree leaves. As a Christian psychologist, I strongly believe that uh, the people cannot avoid the pain which was given since the fall. But, you know, everyone here in this room or everyone who is listening to uh, the lecture in your, uh, your place, probably all of us are trying to, what? Cover up our all kind of pains with our own efforts. What have you tried to do up to now? This is original sin. Personally, I think this is original sin. You know, we learned a lot about the sin from the church. But what is sin then? Every trial to be like God with our own effort, with our own way, with our own will, and with our own kind of purposes. That's the sin. And the next step of ACT act is to figure out their ultimate life goal, ultimate life goal, like life value or life meaning. So C represents commitment, 
then what are you going to just commit to yourself to? This is the content that you need to think about very seriously for the next stage. Okay, acceptance means what? I would accept my pain as it is. I will just stop controlling to avoid the pain. Okay? Then, the next stage, you need to think about the, your life value and meaning to commit to yourself. Even though, even though you are struggling from the pain, the feeling of a failure, the feeling of a failure. So there, are, uh, there is a very, very famous book, uh, which the title is The Courage to Be Hated, Byung Badul Yonggi in Korean. And I really want you to have the courage to become a failure. To become a failure. Then, you know, your way should be going on and on to find out the value, life value and meaning to drive you to go your way continuously. Even though you are suffering a lot from your painful experiences, feeling of a failure. So uh, let me just share two very popular characters from Bible. Uh, who, one is Moses, the other one is Eliza. And now I am meditating the New Testament now. And Eliza and Moses, these two people are considered, considered as a big leaders of Israelites, right? So they mentioned a lot the name of Moses and Elijah. And you know what? These two people are representative of depressive people from the Bible too. So uh, let me just share the Moses story first. As all of you know, Moses was born as a prince of Israel, right? Yes. But he just became a killer. Yeah, he uh, was just out of the home and he watched it. Some Egyptians are harassing, harassing the Israelites very badly. And what did he do? He just killed the Egyptian. And he just escaped from the palace and ran into the desert. And he stayed there for four years. Not one year, not 10 years, for 40 years. Can you guess his mood? Oh, I am a killer. Oh, I am the, the, this, in this desert for 40 years without doing anything as a prince. And would you just guess what kind of a feeling that this Moses would have? Depressed. Depression. So, one day, God appeared to him and say, said, Moses, I saw the agony of Israelites. And now I want to rescue the whole Israelite out of Egypt. Then would you go? Then what did Moses say? Oh God, I am waiting for this time a lot. Yes, use me. I am the right person. You pick up the right person. Moses did not say this. Instead of this, what did Moses say? Oh, Lord, I cannot go. Lord, I cannot go. Because, you know, even Moses gave a specific reason why he cannot go. My lips are blunt. I cannot speak well. Then what did God say? Don't worry. Uh, I will let your brother Aaron go together. He speaks well. Don't worry about that. And what finally happened? With God's almighty hands, Moses could rescue all the Israelites from the Egypt. You know, Moses was very much depressed. He just lost all kind of confidence about himself. He felt 
maybe he is a failure. However, God called him, and God just committed some kind of very important mission to him, and he just obeyed. And the great thing just happened through his life. Another history is about Elijah. As all of you, you know, uh, he won the battle with the Baal's priest. You know, very big kind of a battle that he won. Then what happened? The king Ahab and Ahitabel just chased him to kill. Okay, so he was just chased to the desert, and he uh, was lying down under the tree of Rodem. Then the angel just appeared and gave some kind of water and bread. But you know what? Elijah said, take my life, suicidal thought, okay? Suicidal thought. Take my life. I am no better than any my ancestors. I am no better than my ancestors. Guys, can you imagine his mentality? What kind of attitude might he have when he is doing his spiritual battle with the Paul's priest? Oh, oh, probably I must be better than my ancestors. That's why I want this battle. Probably he might have that kind of thinking. But now, what he said, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. I'm nothing. I'm nothing, Lord. Then he got up and ate bread. And another thing that he shared, I have been very jealous for the Lord Almighty. I am very jealous for. You know, when you just read this in Korean Bible, 내 열심히 특심하오니. I am very special. You know, my zeal to serve you is very special. What kind of mentality he might have? <laughs> I am far better than anyone else. Then what did God say? Oh, you are not the only one who, who is zealous for my work. Yet I reserve 7,000. I live, reserve 7,000 people in Israel to fight this battle for me. And anoint, that is another kind of commandment from God. Anoint Hajar king, anoint Jehu son of Nimshi king, and anoint Elisha to succeed you as a prophet. These things were given to Elijah as a commandment. And that became a, another mission and calling for Elijah. And finally, he obeyed to God's will. Uh, summarizing all my lectures, uh, I'd like to ask you guys four basic questions. Can, would you show? Okay, first, uh, what did you listen from your parents all the time when you were young? Okay. And how did you respond? And what have you tried to gain your parents' love or to protect your parents? What have you tried to do? And now, after you met God as your Savior, as your King, as your Father, then what does God say to you now? What does God say to you? And how do you want to respond to God's love? To escape from your parents' value and desire, uh, from the many, many different uh, kinds of sufferings that you would have before as a failure, now, when you are responding to God's love and gracious uh, thing, then how would you respond to God's love? 
Uh, let me close my lecture uh, by just saying or sharing my depression story again. When I opened up this lecture, I started with my personal story. Do you remember? I got the top score. No, I got the second bottom score from my class evaluation. But uh, you know what? Uh, and I'm, I'm looking for the, the verses that I want to share with you guys. Uh, I cried a lot at the time. And, uh, okay, please wait. Uh, I almost stopped. Almost stopped working that school, Torch Trinity, because at that time we had only English program. No, I cannot teach in Korean language at all. And I just asked to myself, Eunyoung, can you continue to do this? Probably you will gain the, the, the bottom score for the next class evaluation. Is that okay for you? I asked this question um, many, many times. And when I was reading Bible, uh, at the time I, just, I was reading the Ephesians, Ephesians from the New Testament, chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Ephesians verse 2, oh, sorry, chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Uh, I read the God's, kind of God's message at the time, which was given to me. This is it. For it is by grace you have been saved. It is by grace you have been saved. Through faith and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Once again, for it is by grace. Our salvation is by grace. You have been saved. Through faith that is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. Not by works, so then, so that no one can boast. So when I was reading these verses, all right, God, I repent. Up to now, I really wanted to please my parents, who are the pastors of the church. I am PK. No, I should be exemplary all the time. I should be nice to people. Oh, 안녕하세요. You know, I am PK. And you know what? My two parents just came from the North Korea, Pyongyang, Pyongyang. And they were born in North Korea, and they just fled to the South Korea from the Korean War. And both of the parents lost, lost their parents in the early days. And they definitely lost their uh, the educational opportunity, okay, from the war. And think about the situation. I am the first daughter of this family. What kind of expectation that I would get from my parents? Please, Eunyoung, do well at school. Do well at school. Be the top student all the time. That was the expectation from my parents. So I repeated the same thing before God. Okay, Lord, you sent me to the Torch Trinity as a professor. Then I really want to be a top professor, number one professor at this school. I just repeated the same pattern, the things that are done with my parents in front of God. But what I realized at the time is that God is a totally different father from my father, biological father. When I cried and just uh, prayed to God, Lord, this is me. I got the second bottom score. And in my mind, the Lord said, okay, 
Okay, Anya. It's good. Still, I love you because I sacrificed my only son to save you on the cross. Don't worry. Don't worry at all. I love you. And would you please be there until the time that I move you to another school? Even though you are always the, the bottom professor in your, the school, then with the God's calling, I said yes. I said yes. Lord, yes, I will continue to stay here and just serve you. And that was 2005 at the time, but I had also heard the, the message. And this year, uh, I come back to school after I finish my research leave. And this is my 20th year to serve the Dolce Trinity. I am still in Dolce Trinity to serve the Lord. So shall we just accept our limit and enjoy God's abundant love and grace at your work, in your family, and the church? Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for this time to share your words and some counseling knowledge with the, uh, the people who are gathering at this Global Mission Church. Lord, there is no righteous person in this world, including our parents. Lord, help us. Please help us to escape from the value of our parents. And please help us to speak to you and just respond to you, your gracious love with our whole life. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. I heard that you may have a Q&A time. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Choi. Please take some time to drink some water. Uh, very casual time. Uh, I missed the first 30 minutes. Uh, father walked in, lost the son, uh, had to counsel him. Uh, so I, I might miss some things, but I'll try my best. So we want to take questions. Um, for those on Zoom or YouTube, you can type in your questions on chat, and we'll take your questions. But first, I will give the option to the on-site here. If you have a question, please raise your hand and, and come up to the stage here. Yes, thank you, Mike. This is pre-planned. I told oh. Mike, you got to have one question, okay? That's why you listen so carefully. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a question, even though Pastor Stanley told me to have a question. Okay. Um, what would you say to someone who mm -hmm. has depression, mm -hmm. um, but has decided to work through this depression through one exercise, mm -hmm. being active, maybe, mm -hmm. and then another, yeah, prayer and and uh, spending time with God, or mm -hmm. in any other way as well, saying mm -hmm. this is how I'm going to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So your question is specifically? How, yeah, how would you counsel someone mm -hmm. who has decided, even though I, I have depression, I'm, going, I'm not going to go find medication. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to use medication. I'm going to stay active. I'm going to exercise as one example. Or on the other hand, another person saying, um, I'm, just going, I'm going to pray. I'm going to, yeah, just, God is going to heal me and I'm going nice. to pray through this. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, it's very important. Um, God made us a, as a physical one and a psychological one and the spiritual one. So my approach is kind of integra integrative. So um, first of all, I probably diagnose the people first. The degree of depression and the the level of functioning first. So it is very severe, then I recommend them to go to the doctors and take the pill first. And uh, then uh, usually what I'm, I'm doing for the next step is feeding, feeding themselves with the proper foods and just help them to have a regular exercise time. This is all biological. Okay? Then, 
uh, probably I encourage them to think about their early life experiences, just as I told you today. Okay? What kind of parents you had and what kind of failure you experienced. So the next step will be the counseling. But I am Christian counselor, so probably now you can understand my approach. Yeah, I apply the counseling theory, not only the counseling theory, but the biblical cultural and uh, kind of uh, spiritual insight in my counseling. So uh, after they figure out their interjection defense mechanism, and after they figure out their st strong ego, then I probably challenge them to give up. And I let them know the meaning of inter uh, the interjection. And then usually my clients would just uh, express their full rage, angry towards the parents. That is the time that the anger explosion just occurred because then they can fully understand why they are suffering a lot. But that is the not end of the uh, counseling. Uh, I just encourage them to meditate God as the loving Father. And I challenge to repent. And I challenge them to respond to God's calling again. So that's the flow that usually I do in my counseling. Thank you for the good question. Okay, thank you. Others? Yes, sir. Please come up, Christy. Oh, several. <laughs> um, I always wondered if, like, kind of like the the cause of depression. Mm -hmm. I think, like, is it that the life experiences that you've you've had, or maybe like your attitude um, towards life, or is it really that maybe your body is maybe not able to or not producing enough, like the the serotonin or uh -huh. endorphins. Mm -hmm. Or is it like combination of both? Thank you. I, I got the point first. Okay. I, I, can I just uh, answer to the first question? Uh, there are many different kind of people who approach the depression with different angle. Okay, so usually the psychiatrist, those are people who approach this matter as a the bio, as biological aspect. So uh, for them, probably the depression people are people who has no uh, level of serotonin in their brain, okay? But from the family counseling perspective, depression is not the biological thing, but the relation thing, the relational thing. So usually they say the depression people can just speak out the dysfunction or relational problems and difficulties from the family. So in order to solve this depression, uh, the counselors should uh, rearrange the relationships, the intimacy or distance, or the role, roles of the members are doing, you know, very dif different. See? Yeah. So it depends on the approach that the counselors or psychiatrist does take. Uh, but uh, for me, yeah, my perspective is a Christian counseling, so uh, I can combine the individual counseling theory and the family counseling theory that I just shared, and then think about the blank part of the theory and how God is existing in this blank, and I just try to fit the blank with uh, God's words. Yeah. But uh, answering to you, um, I met many different uh, psychiatrists who are working with depressive people. And one of them, uh, whose name is Ui Hun Choi from Rodem Counseling Center, yeah. uh, he always told that the depression is a biological thing. <laughs> Another thing is a developmental problem. So under the age of one, from birth to one, if your parents' caring is not good enough, 
then uh, it, it's, it cannot be avoidable to just develop this depression. So yeah, some people can see this depression as a develop, developmental problem too. So it differs. Okay, next one. Uh, just one more. You can do one more question yeah, while you're yeah, up. Yeah, continue. continue. Uh, I think you explained, was it like the Freud's idea on like you had id, like super ego and mm -hmm. then ego. And you said that like Christians are kind of more on like the super ego side where. Mm -hmm. And so how I think I resonate with that. And like, how would you advise Christians to. Um, be in a balance of like id and super ego. Oh, excellent question. Thank you okay. so much. I thought about this before, and you know what? Uh, there is some parts of your super ego which is not pleasing God only. Think about the situation. I should be faithful. I mean, I should be diligent. I should be nice to people in order to succeed in this world. You know, many people think this way too. So in our super ego part, I think there are two different parts, which is uh, just pleasing, to, pleasing God's will and accomplishing God's divine work. But the other hand, still, you are pleasing to yourself with your super ego. So I think it's good for us to divide the areas like this. Thank you. Uh, other questions? Yes, come on up, Henry. All right, so um, this is a, a prelude to the question. So there was a church back in, I think, California where this pastor was helping um, specifically uh, mm -hmm. uh, Christians who are dealing with um, depression. Mm -hmm. And long story short, the pastor actually eventually uh, committed suicide as well. Mm -hmm. And so my question was, um, you know, like Christians who believe in the Lord, who receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior, is it possible for them, one, mm -hmm. they do have depression, that mm -hmm. is clear, but like... How do you interpret that? Do you interpret that as the pastor maybe did not really receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and he wasn't hopeful? Or he did have Jesus, but depression just took him, you know? So that, I guess that's the question. Oh, oh it's very difficult to answer. <laughs> uh, the thing is that only the person who suicide can know the truth. No one can tell that this is happening in his mind or in his ma head, or no, can, no one can tell these kind of things about the people who are killing themselves. And um, my perspective on the depressive people among the Christians, uh, I just uh, see them as a sinner, as I am. Yeah, they are just a sinner, as I am because they tried to overcome the life difficulties with their own ways, but they found out there is no hope. That's why they just killed themselves. Uh, so, uh, okay, this is his limit, but I cannot evaluate or I cannot uh, blame them because still I don't know the exact idea or exact uh, inner saying when they are killing themselves. No one knows it. Yeah, so uh, it's very kind of sorry for me to see the pastors are uh, uh, suiciding, but um, I have uh, my pity on them and uh, uh, still pray that that they would know God who have a, has an abundant love. And, you know, before God's love, I really want the people can be freed enough yeah, to uh, please themselves with their own ways. Okay. Uh, thank you. Others? Any questions? Yes, Amy, come on up.
Um, so I guess for people who are taking meds to overcome their depression, mm -hmm. what will be the duration of time mm -hmm. that it will take for them to completely heal? Mm -hmm. So uh, your, your question is, uh, can the pills can just uh, restore the people fully? Mm. Uh, and the duration, I mean, how long does it take? Mm. Okay. Um, the psychiatrist's job, psychiatrist's job on, in the clinic is to maintain or controlling the, the amount of uh, drugs, the pills. Okay, so when they listen to the patient, okay, uh, the symptoms is gone or the symptoms can be light, then they just uh, decrease the amount of the, the, the drugs. And when this is going on, and finally, people can just uh, uh, get no medicine. The people need, uh, no, sorry, people probably does not need any kind of help from the pill. But uh, it hardly happened. Sorry to say this. If you would, uh, just have the pill, then the amount of the pills can be decreased. But you should maintain a certain amount of pills uh, to the time that you go to heaven. Yeah, that, that is the, the kind of uh, bad story. However, if your psychiatrist just uh, try to decrease the amount and they evaluate, oh, this is time to quit, then they say, okay, why don't you just quit the pill? Then it's, that is a time that you can be free from this medication. So it differs uh, uh, person by person, and it differs by, uh, by the, the functioning levels. So uh, one recommendation is that do not stop taking pills with the, you, by, by your own will or by your own decision. Please just visit the doctors until the time that he or she says, now you are free, okay? But the other hand, I saw many people who just continue to visit the psychiatrist that had no effect. Yeah, some effect, but almost no effect then I think uh, it's better for you, the people who visit counselors, not the psychiatrist. You know, from my experiences, uh, someone that was called by Bundang Seoul National University because of the deep depression, and she did not go there, and she just visited my office, and for one year of counseling, he was so much relieved from the depression, and he just went to China even as a missionary without taking any pills. So it differs people, the person by person. So if the drug is not working, then just visit the good counselors and get some help from them. All right, I have uh, one question from uh, the online here. Mm -hmm. um, as a Christian, what kind of attitude should we take to overcome when we have depression. As a Christian, mm -hmm. what kind of attitude should we okay. take to overcome? Attitude. Uh, feeling of depression cannot be avoidable, okay, first. Because, you know, as I told you, uh, from the time that the human being experienced the fallen side of them, then, uh, we are not God. We are not perfect. So we may experience may, many kind of vulnerable stages of life, and we can just go through the dark time. It's very natural. So the first one is to take this as a natural thing. And the second, um, this comes from my own experiences. As I just shared, right? Think about your old trial to overcome your failure experiences. Probably you would do some kind of things very badly throughout your life. Then please just give up that 
give up and just uh, confess that, oh, I haven't been tried a lot uh, from my own side, this and that, God, and this is my sin. Please confess your sin before God. And then please listen to God, what he says to you. What he says to you. No, think about the abundant love that God has inside of his mind. No, he sacrificed his only son to save our lives. This is real. This is a real story. So what if you have a, a person who sacrifices his son to save you? Then can you doubt? Can you doubt his or her love? It's impossible. So just feel the, he, God's love on the cross uh, realistically every day, and then probably God's abundant love can uh, let you live. And His love can move you towards another stage of life, like Moses and Elijah, and even myself, and even many people around you in the church. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Uh, as a pastor, mm -hmm. I uh, deal with uh, uh, some uh, members with depression, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, there's a limitation that I can do. Mm -hmm. I can meet them one on one. I can counsel them. I can surround them with a small group support system. I can keep reminding them the word of God. Uh, but sooner or later, you know, I want to introduce them to an English speaking mm -hmm. counselor. Uh -huh. So practically. For foreigners who speak English in Korea, uh, do you know where I can direct them? That's uh -huh. the first question. Mm -hmm. And then the second question is, what else can I do or shouldn't do that, I'm, uh, that I just said? I see. Very practical. <laughs> uh, first, uh, please introduce the Torch Trinity Counseling Center. We have um, lots of English-speaking counselors, yeah, so we can meet them. Uh, second, uh, as a pastor, Uh, it's very tricky. When you are preaching, I just ask you to give your message in a very humble way. A humble way, which means, you know, the Christian super ego can be formed when they are listening to the preaching. So uh, when you are preaching, uh, do this and don't, that, don't, don't do this with a very strong voice and with uh, such a confidence, confident manner, then people would think that, oh, if I cannot follow that, then I am a failure. Oh, I am nothing. So, you know, just recognize the limitations and the weaknesses of human parts, and please humbly uh, deliver your message to the congregations. Another thing, um, usually the social network and the small group can be really helpful for those people who are depressed. So I guess most of you are doing a really good job for helping the people around you. But you know, according to the state of the depressive people, you know, with their strong super ego or with their kind of um, wrong, strong self-esteem, okay, wrong, strong self-esteem, it is very difficult for them to receive your hostility, okay? So in that case, uh, so a small group gathering cannot be the only way to help them. Then cautiously, with, uh, with much caution, and you can just recommend them to visit the counselors. Okay, all right. Sorry, guys, for the super ego on, on the... <laughs> <laughs> I, I confessed while I was listening. <laughs> uh, any uh, last answer uh, questions before I close? Uh -huh. Yeah. What's your favorite Bible verse? To be near God is the great blessing for me. From Psalm. Yeah. The near, near by, uh, be near God is the blessing for me. Yeah, this is my, so in, I can just go through the many kind of uh, difficulties and sometimes I would feel 
this and that, but from all of my life experience, just go to the God, nearby God, is my ultimate blessing. That is my favorite verse. And then, don't worry, he, he asked everyone that. Same question. <laughs> all right, last question. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay. Oh. Come on up. All right, oh, so thank you. Oh. And uh, we have some flowers. It's very lovely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. thank you. Thank you. And then while she's up, she wants to ask one question. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so last question. Give me the flowers. You have your last question. <laughs> okay, welcome. <laughs> Um, really quick, I think in your the symptoms of depression and bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. I think really interesting one was when somebody talks fast, that's a symptom of bipolar. Mm -hmm. Why is that? That's really interesting. Oh, what, what is the relationship of talking fast? Uh -huh. Why is that a symptom of having a bipolar disorder? I see. You know, when uh, your mood is off, and you have many things to do, then your energy level is going up and up, and you cannot stop talking and talking. So your much talking is related to your much ideas and zeal and everything. Oh, good. All right. I'd... All right, thank you so much uh -huh. uh, for coming, Dr. Choi. And... Uh... <laughs> Uh, why, why are you yeah. <laughs> right. Let me close with a prayer, but uh, uh, it's, it's been a very beneficial time for me and for all the members, and it's a very humbling time. So thank you. Let me pray and finish. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you so much for this precious time with Dr. Choi, your servant. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, we've learned so much. Uh, and uh, one of the you know, things that stuck out to me is accepting our weakness and being okay, having the courage to be a failure. Uh, so Lord, we thank you for many wisdom that you've given us. And as we pray, we confess our humility that we can't do all things and that we would uh, rely on you and trust you and just simply obey. Father, we thank you, Lord. Uh, have mercy upon our members who are struggling uh, with depression and use us. And thank you for equipping us to help others in mm -hmm. the future who are going through depression. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you, Lord. Continue to bless Dr. Choi's ministry and use her, Lord. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. Let's give a applause. Okay, thank you for applause. having me and this flower. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.